I'm on my way home after Thunder on the Prairie 2023. I've got about 840 miles, give or take, and I am burnt. I mean, literally, I've got sunburn. It's not bad, but I've got sunburn and I'm tired. I'm just beat. It was a long drive out. It's gonna be a long drive back, but I've done this before and I'm somewhat used to it. I know what to expect. I know that I'm gonna be dragging for a while. After I get home, it's gonna take a little bit longer to recover because I'm older, but it's worth it to me. And as long as I'm physically able and my vehicle's reliable, I'm gonna make these road trips to go to these events because I like to get together with my friends. That was probably the most important thing I got out of Thunder on the Prairie this year, last year, and, and the other things that I go to, I've been going to over the years, the more I've gotten involved in Second Amendment on social media, and the more I've got to meet people on YouTube. I've made a lot of friends over the years, and that's really, if, if somebody were to say, you know, do you get compensated for doing this? If you mean like monetarily, no. I, I do get free stuff, but it's not a lot of stuff, not like some other channels. But if if, if I had to have something to, to call compensation, it would be all the friends that I've made over the years. And you guys are some interesting characters, that's for sure. You're you're a lot different than me in, in a lot of ways, as well as similar to me in, in other ways. And I have to say that even though some people might think that our differences would would be some sort of barrier to making friends. I don't see it that way. We're all individuals, and if we were all the same, the world would be kind of boring. And just like people bringing different kinds of guns to Thunder on the Prairie, we all bring something different to the table as, as individuals, as far as our, our background, our skill set, that sort of thing. And we're there to help each other, as well as be a royal pain in the ass. I kind of call my YouTube family, my dysfunctional second family, but I'm glad I have it, and that's probably the main reason I, I stay with this in whatever capacity. Also, I, I am kind of having some fun with it, but it's not always fun. As a matter of fact, for a guy who's not monetized, I sure do treat this like a second job. I'm my own worst critic, and I get frustrated with myself a lot with things like flubbing a line or not taking the time to properly prepare or do research or forgetting something when I when I go to one of these events or just trying to rush a video because I literally have a tight schedule and I really want to get this video out and it should be something I can do in five minutes but it, it doesn't take five minutes and some of my my friends and, and uh, some people that uh, haven't seen me before, got to see me kind of have one of my little meltdowns at Thunder on the Prairie because my guns, not all of them were running well. I was having some issues. I found out later everybody was having issues. It was just one of those, it was a bad range day from that standpoint. Uh, just some failures with, with the firearms. Some of us, I think, had not taken the time to prepare our guns. I can tell you that I spent the part of the first day out there on a picnic table cleaning my guns because I literally didn't make time to clean my guns before I came out. You might go, why don't you clean your guns right after you get home from the range? I don't always have time for that. So sometimes I go in the safe and they might sit in there for years. I brought out a gun I probably haven't shot in five or six years at least, at least. And I don't remember if I cleaned it when I put it in the safe. Uh, it's, you know, unless it's black powder, I'm not worried about corrosion. So time is, is, well, to quote Khan, time is a luxury I do not have. I live a very, very busy schedule and a lot of things change constantly. Before I came out here, the water softener, uh, the resin in it, uh, somehow or another broke free and I had yellow pellets spraying out of every faucet and shower head and plugging up the, the washer and the dishwasher and everything. I, I didn't know if I was even gonna make it up to Thunder on the Prairie. Right? I can't just leave my family back uh, back east uh, with uh, no running water, right? Uh, so, I mean, things have come up. I tried to go to um, 
the Great American Outdoor Show once, and, and the day before, I bent both lower control arms on the truck. Had to scrub that trip. So uh, I try to put a lot of planning into these trips. I try to put a lot of effort into saving up and getting all the stars aligned, making sure I've got the vacation time, having everything you know ready to go at home. But if there's an emergency or there's an, uh, an unforeseen event or something like that, I, I have to cancel it. So that automatically puts stress on me. And it's, it's more me putting stress on me than anybody or anything else. And then when I get all the way out here and I'm out in the heat and I'm, you know, dragging these heavy guns up to the line and doing this and doing that, and setting up the tripod and, you know, I got to stand in front of the, the camera and then go back and look at the footage and my in frame, all right, move it over here, move it over there, finally get everything set and then the gun doesn't go bang, right? Enough of that will just kind of ruin the day. I mean, I, I was trying to film some videos and I'm trying to get everything in one take. And I mean, some of the videos, I did eight takes. Uh, that takes time, you know, people are watching me. I'm sure they're getting a good laugh. I actually didn't have fun making my videos. I've got to spend a lot of time editing. That's another thing, the editing. I might shoot 20 minutes of footage that I got to edit down into under 10 minutes. And it's just a royal pain. You might go, well, how hard is that? Well, try it sometime. It's a royal pain. So that's more stress. That's more work. That's more time out of my schedule. I really don't have. And once again, I'm not a big channel and I'm not monet I'm not making money off of this. I'm not asking for anybody's sympathy or, or whatnot, but I just want people to understand that sometimes this isn't fun. So you might say, well, then why do you keep doing it? Because sometimes it is. And I have to stop to remember that. What ended up happening was I was getting pissed. I mean, I was getting really pissed with some of some of the malfunctions I was having and some of the, the videos that I planned to do that no longer were going to happen now. And you would have thought, all right, well, why don't you just pack up your shit and go home? But instead, I made some videos with some other people. They wanted me in their video or, or something like that, or, or they wanted to... to make a video uh, shooting one of my guns or something like that, that was fun. That was more enjoyable than me trying to make my own videos. Hanging out with people that I only get to see once a year, or maybe I just saw them at NRAM, or maybe I've never seen them before, that was fun. Going out to dinner and joking around and, you know, the long goodbyes, that was fun. Getting to just get to know people that I met last year for the first time better and just networking out a little bit more, strengthening those bonds, getting a little bit more understanding of the fact that we are different, but yet we come together for the same thing. That was fun. Even getting out and getting to see uh, the country, even though I've driven this route uh, time and again, I'm actually taking a slightly different route on the way back, but uh, that is fun. So, I guess the good outweighs the bad, but from time to time, it doesn't seem like it to me. When I'm frustrated because I'm on take 36, because this has gone wrong, and that has gone wrong, and this has gone wrong, and I'm up against the clock, and just, I, I question why the hell do I do this? And uh, some of the people got to see uh, how I am. When I go back and, and, you know, take two, take three, take four, I'm, I'm, Sometimes I'm cussing myself out on the way back to the tripod to turn off the camera and reset it. Uh, I, I, like I said earlier, I am my, my own uh, you know, biggest critic. I'm my own worst enemy. I'm the one that puts the most stress, unnecessary stress on me. But it's my friends and the people in the audience that I think are the ones that remind me it's not always about stress. It's not always about trying to, to get the perfect video, which I never get. It's, it's really about all the other stuff. And I'm glad that I have these friends that do that. I'm glad that there are people out in the audience that from time to time will make a comment like, you explained it in a way I didn't see on any other video I watched. Thank you. That makes it all worth it. It really does. So thanks to everybody out there who set up these events and go to these things just like me or are, are active in the, the community and the culture, are, are active in the fight for the Second Amendment, are active in the industry, whether it be YouTube or firearms or what have you. The people that are out there interacting, whether it be the creators or the audience, 
thanks to everybody that do the things that make this worth it. Thanks for watching.